Hell House LLC Part 3, Lake of Fire, was just released on Shudder. It's a Shudder exclusive, and if you don't have Shudder, you should definitely check it out as a horror fanatic. If you're a horror fan, you definitely want to at least check out Shudder. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it. And we got the Creep Show series coming out here next week, one week from today. So uh, I will definitely be covering the Creep Show series here over the next week. All right, so Hell House. Let's talk about the first couple so you know where I'm at with this franchise. Part one I thought was great. Kind of just came out of nowhere. Um, I didn't absolutely love it, but I really enjoyed it. I, I threw it on not knowing anything about it. It kind of turned out like a Grave Encounters for me. Same kind of thing. Found footage style. Didn't know anything about it. Threw it on. Loved it. Same thing happened with uh, Monster Project. I've had a bunch of um, success with throwing on random found footage films. At this time, I thought the title was really interesting. I was like, I knew what, you know, LLC meant. Um... But I, I just thought it was a bad title. I just heard it and I was like, ugh, that doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? Um, and so when that one surprised me, there was a second one pretty shortly after when I had at least seen it anyways. I felt like it came out really quick after the first one. And I thought that that one was just kind of a rehash of the first one and it didn't really bring anything new to the table. And I thought there was a few effective creep moments and I was like okay those were all right but overall I was pretty disappointed with the sequel just kind of hoping that they would uh, amp things up and and uh, try some new things and, and they just didn't and so I went into LLC part three you know optimistic that maybe they might have learned from their mistakes and I personally I don't think they did I think that the story is a little bit better that they tried to go a little more um, in depth with with a story here than than maybe the previous installments, and I think that if you're a fan of the franchise in that way, now I haven't seen the first and the second one since they came out, so my memory of this franchise is a little hazy. I mean, I remember some of it, I remember all of it, but it this connects well to them. But you're talking about an hour and twenty minute movie that relies on like 10 minutes, 15 minutes of flashbacks to other, to the previous installment multiple times. And it's like, wow, so this movie's only like an hour and 10 minutes of new footage. That's short, that's real short. Um, here's the biggest problem I had with the film, just outright. I didn't feel like there was almost any horror in the movie at all. This is a horror movie franchise. The first one was very effective and creepy. The second one, tried to do the same things, but at least they tried. And they added a couple creepier things in there that worked. And then this third one, one scene had a little tension into it. But outside of that, man, I just didn't feel like there was almost any horror in this film at all. I felt like they were just trying to focus mostly on the storyline, which, you know, isn't a terrible thing per se. Like, hey, man, it's a, it's a film. You're, you're supposed to tell a story, right? So... I get that focusing on that part, but it's also a horror movie. And the audience that's coming for this movie, even if you're a big fan of the franchise, yeah, you're, you're going to get some stuff out of the story that's like, oh, cool, that's a different spin and there's some closure and stuff like that. But I think first and foremost, when it comes to a horror movie, if you don't succeed on the horror, then it's a failure. I mean, I just found myself bored. I like the characters fine. I mean, the lead girl's a very attractive and a good actress, and there's some new characters that are fun. I thought the um, I thought the gay guy, I don't know what else to call him, uh, that works the cameras, I thought he had some funny lines. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the story goes, it's just, you know, it's been 10 years, and some millionaire has bought the Abaddon Hotel, and he's going to tell this, uh, interactive Faust play while people walk through in these masks and there's this documentary uh, crew that's asked to come in and film the event and all the setting up and all of that. Not really honestly sure why they even need to be there, but we have to have the found footage. So there you go. That's in there. And there's a lot of like new footage 
from the old films. So they kind of like incorporate new scenes that we'd never seen before from the other stuff that ties storylines together. So as I said, I think from a storyline perspective, I think they did a, a pretty good job. And I will say this, you know, of some of the friends that I have that were big fans of the first two, Paul Schunk, I'll give him a big shout out because he's a huge fan of this franchise. He fucking loved this one. And he was raving about how it perfectly closed it out. So have hope if you are like a huge fan of one and two. I think there is good hope that you might really like this one. And then, you know, there was other people who were like, yeah, I really liked it. And then I had a couple other buddies uh, that were middle of the road. They were kind of like, yeah... You know, it was all right. I liked it better than two. Uh, my buddy David said that. And then uh, my buddy Daniel, who I'm like most in line with of any of my friends online, he was like, he couldn't finish it. He shot it off an hour in and his biggest complaint was why make a horror movie with zero horror in it. And I was like, <laughs> I understand that complaint, man. I felt that way exactly. I was, I was just waiting because here you go. And I'm surprised he actually shut it off at that hour point because he had 20 minutes left and that's that third act and you would think the third act's gonna just pack on the scares but maybe he read my comment and was like oh shit man if there's not gonna be anything I'd be curious on if I was actually influential on his decision to to axe it but he didn't miss much I mean if he was a big fan of the fan of the franchise and he wanted to see how the story ended and how it all wrapped up and how it all tied in and all that then yeah he would have finished it and he probably would have had some um significance there for the closure and all that stuff so if you're you know you're a fan of that uh, of the storyline of this uh then then you would stick it out but he was there just purely for the fun of it to have you know to watch a scary movie just to get creeped out this and that and it just wasn't happening so if you're going into this wanting scares if you're like just purely there as a horror fan for horror you're not going to find much if you're a big fan of the franchise and you just are there mostly for the story and you want to see the closure, then I think you might be, you might be, you know, satisfied. As I said, my other friends who are, were. So maybe, you know, obviously, like all movies, uh, mileage is, will vary, may vary. Um, but yeah, it just, it wasn't a success for me. It's my least favorite of the three. I, I shouldn't say I hated it or anything. I didn't. It just was so lackluster, and it just felt like, yet again, another entry in this series that just tries to do stuff from the first one and does it, you know, inferior. It's like, you already did that, and you did it so much better, so why try it again and less effectively? Like, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like they got creative enough that they tried enough with this one and they don't even it's not even that they don't have scares that work it's that they're not even trying for them that was what was surprising to me because a lot of the times i'll sit there and i'll say like oh man this is this is a movie without scares and i'll mean that like wow their scares were so ineffective that it felt like a film without scares like there's no setup for scares. A lot of the tension and, and the buildups and all that and atmosphere from the film is supposed to come from like people in the background that are there for a second. And while that can work and that has worked in the past, I've definitely seen movies where there's creepy tension throughout because there's, you know, your your focus is here in the foreground and then somewhere in the background and then they'll focus on it for a second. Like, oh, ooh, that's creepy. And it like sets that mood and it sets that atmosphere. This one just wasn't having that effect on me at all. And it was really the only attempt at horror they had outside of a maybe two things. It, it just really is just completely lacking in that area. And if, as I said, I think that's just a failure. Um, but since they weren't going for it, I, I guess they got what they were going for. They were just going for a story to finish up this trilogy. Okay, they got it. This is definitely, I, I feel like, the end cap. Like, I, they where they leave it off, I think, that's that. Uh, so it is a good finale is in that regard. Um, but overall, just, yeah, not a fan. Um, <laughs> I've said it enough, but I want to give my reasoning. So when people start blasting me and being like, whatever, man, you just don't get it, and you're an idiot, and all that, that happens. Any, any franchise fans, they want to love it, and they don't want to hear bad from it. It's my, my opinion. I hope you loved it. If you did, fantastic. Paul, I'm glad you loved it. And Daniel, I'm all right, Daniel. David, I'm 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 glad you found some more enjoyment than I did. Uh 
<laughs> so anyway, guys, all right, let, let me know what you think. Uh, get Shutter if you don't have it. It's, it's a grad service. So anyway, adios.